Every topic is on the table here at WGNU 920 AM and 106.9 FM. Weekday mornings here St. Louis Live with Chris Denman and Travis Terrell. I am a, what the kids call a five tool player. That is so impressive. Patty Moe for your evening drive with Let's Get Comfortable. I thought that you were a rock fan. It doesn't mean I need to watch those crappy movies he makes, Pat. Don't mean I need to watch that crappy wrestling he makes, Jim. Oh! End your day with the new John Simmons on the new John Simmons Show. Uh, it's nice that... Hollywood wants to cash in on the Christian films and wants to put some of these stories on the big screen. But would you mind consulting with some people who uh, have read the book? Maybe a voice for all of St. Louis. We are WGNU. Welcome to the new John Simmons show. After years of battling a gambling addiction, John found a hope and a future for his life through Christ. He has spent the last several years encouraging others to find joy peace and hope in their lives by walking out God's plan for their lives. Now, John wants to help you find the passion, vision, and faith you need to start writing out God's sentence for your life and help you add to it every day. Four lines are now open. Call or text 314-880-0808. Now, here is your host, the new John Simmons. I'm running for your heart, I'm running for your heart, till I am a soul on fire, Lord, I'm longing for your ways, I'm waiting for the day. Hey everybody, welcome, it's the new John Simmons Show, part of the Testimony House Network, where you can find God's sentence for your life and become the new you, where we talk about finding passion, vision, and faith in your walk with Christ so that your life can overflow with joy, peace, and hope today. Welcome to the program, everybody. It's getting closer to the end of the week. I want to thank everybody who's going to join us on Facebook Live and also listening in your car radio or streaming live on newjohnsimmons.com. If you haven't heard the good news, we're on in multiple states now. We're very excited about that, as well as many of your devices inside your house, the Apple HomePod and the Google Play Store and also Amazon Alexa. You can find us on all sorts of wonderful places. I hope that uh, if you're a listener of the show that you would encourage someone else who maybe needs a message of hope or is looking to go further in their relationship with Christ. We have a lot of great conversations here on the show to encourage people in their faith walk and be able to hopefully bless them with some some tips, some tricks, some conversation, and possibly some testimonies of people who are really turning into people who are trying to find God's sentence for their life. That is what this show is all about, finding God's sentence for your life. We talk about it often on the beginning of the show. You hear it's one of the first things that I say, and tonight we're going to get into a little bit of what that exactly means. We talk about it a lot, but it's, it's worth repeating. There are times in our lives where sometimes it takes a while for something to sink in, and for some people, you don't even know what you're missing out on. For me, I didn't realize how important I was to God until I was 30 years old. I'd spent my entire adult life trying to do things my way. I found myself at the end of a gambling addiction where I spent 90 days in rehab. Can you imagine? Can you imagine spending 90 days trying to get sober from something that's been destroying your life? And this is where I was at the end of 90 days. I realized that my life hadn't changed in the way that I'd hoped when I started that program. In fact, I was a problem gambler who lost over half a million dollars, and I really wanted to see major changes in my life. When I would wake up, I would think, this is not the life that I wanted when I was a kid or as a teenager, as a young man. I wanted things to look different in my life, and so I went into rehab. I went into a a system that was designed by the world to help people like me people who were dealing with major drug addiction or major behavior addiction and help clean up their act. And I found that my desire to gamble never left me, no matter how many sessions I went to, no matter how many people or counselors I talked to. Nope, the hope that I was searching for in my life never showed up. Instead, the desire to gamble was all that was on my heart. Every time I would wake up, I'd think about a way to gamble. And if I didn't have any money, I'd think about how much I needed to work until I could get some money in the bank to where I could pay off some of the debt or pay off some of the people that I owed money to, whether it was a bookie who was taking my sports bets or a payday loan across town. 
I was not doing things very well. <laughs> and uh, they were causing a lot of chaos in my life. But I would wake up with this desire to do these things because this is what I wanted to do when I was a little kid. I had dreams and aspirations, but when I turned 18 one day, I woke up and all my friends around me were playing online poker. Do you remember the poker craze of the early 2000s? Chris Moneymaker, 2002. This was a cornerstone moment in my career with Sin. <laughs> uh, Chris Moneymaker, that's his real name. That's not some catchy nickname. Chris Moneymaker won the World Series of Poker in 2002, many years ago, but at the time it seemed like the greatest thing I'd ever heard because this guy had bought into an online poker tournament for $40, 40 bucks. I'm not trying to highlight how encouraging it is to gamble. I'm trying to tell you my story on how things happen so that I can give you hope at the end of my story. So don't miss this. <laughs> I'm not trying to encourage this gambling addiction in anyone else. Uh, Chris Moneymaker sat into a online poker tournament. So people from around the world would get in and they'd each put up $40 and they'd play until everybody had been kicked out except the one winner. And so Chris Moneymaker won this tournament. He ends up sitting in a real poker table in Las Vegas for the World Series of Poker. And they used to air these tournaments on ESPN. I don't know if they still do. They might. I wouldn't watch it. <laughs> and he won two and two and a half million dollars, something like that. So he pays 40 bucks and he wins two and a half million dollars. Can you imagine? This is our lottery mindset, isn't it? I mean, we pay a dollar in the Powerball hoping to spike that half a million and we spend all week talking about how we'll spend the money once we win as if it's so likely. You ever met somebody who won the lottery? There was this guy I worked with. This true story. I worked with this guy at the casino and he played every lottery. Missouri and Illinois, both sides of the river, he would go and he would buy tickets for each lottery, the pick three, the pick four, the Powerball, whatever the, all the lotteries, whatever they are. I don't know how many there are total, not the scratch off, but just the drawing lotteries. And he played the exact same numbers. And he won the lottery like significant amounts. Not like, hey, I got my, my ticket money back. No, like uh, five figures or more, five times. <laughs> this guy, five times or more, he won more than $10,000 in the lottery. I forget what his big win was, but he's like, you just play the same numbers. He's like, don't mess around getting different numbers. He had a whole system. He, and obviously it worked for him and that I didn't take his advice. I was gambling in a lot of ways, but I, I thought the lottery was stupid. <laughs> uh, isn't that great? Isn't it funny how you're doing something wrong and you can still look at somebody else and be like, no, nah, that's, that's, that's dumb. It's a, uh, <sighs> for me, it was exciting to play cards because I had this moment in my life where I saw Chris Moneymaker turn $40 into two and a half million. And for me, I was like, I want to do that. I want to replicate that in my life. I want to find a way to make money without doing anything except playing a game of skill where people can look at me and think that, oh, he's so smart. He can out bluff them and he can read the guys and all that. I wanted it desperately. And at the time, I was working a whole lot. I loved working, not because I loved working, but because I loved the results of working, which was that big fat paycheck at the end of the week. I, I got a work permit at 14. Started working at Chick fil A at 14 years old. It's working the cash registers on the weekends. <laughs> it's funny because uh, Chick fil A is now sort of recognized as this Christian restaurant, but I wasn't a Christian when I worked there. And they weren't as popular as they were now. In fact, here in St. Louis, where I'm at, they only had Chick-fil-A at like the malls in town. And that was the only place you could go. Now they're, they are built up like real McDonald's restaurants. You can walk in and sit down and they're all over our state. They're growing up. In fact, we just got one built a few months ago down the street from the station. Love Chick-fil-A too. In this Raising Cane's debate, uh, I'm just going to end that now. I know my family and my in-laws love to discuss the Chick-fil-A Raising Cane's saga. You can just stop that nonsense. Chick-fil-A all day. Your food is already blessed before you eat it. You don't even have to pray for it. That's saving time already. <laughs> How many restaurants have you gone into where they're like, it's, it's my pleasure to serve you, and they're coming up to your table and refilling your drinks. You can tell me all about that Texas toast at Raising Cane's, but I ain't having it. 
I ain't having it. Especially since I worked at Chick Fil A, I have a special love in my heart for Chick Fil A. Listen, I don't, I don't be eating no uh, regular people chicken. I want that blessed chicken. I want that Christian chicken. <laughs> You know, Colonel Sanders was chicken, too, so I can go to KFC. So it's not just Chick-fil-A. I can go to KFC, too. <laughs> John, you're ridiculous. Hey, it's sometimes. When I was gambling, though, going back to my story about Chris Moneymaker, I had all this money because I was working at Chick-fil-A, and then, you know, at 16, I got a job at the Dairy Queen down the street from where I went to school. Eventually, I started working at Denny's, and I was working three jobs. I didn't have any money. I didn't owe rent. I was still living with mom and my brother. So I have all this disposable income. And so the poker shows up in my life via the online poker. Everybody was playing on this website called partypoker.com. Now the gambling websites are illegal in the States. You can't play poker online anymore. They've cut it off. It's illegal. So that's what I was up to, something you can't even do anymore. You can go in a casino and play cards, but... You can't bet on the internet. So I was playing all these poker tournaments, and so I would buy in for just a fixed amount, and eventually that wasn't enough for me. I wanted to keep going, and I found cash games where, where I would spend my money. And so cash game, if you're not familiar with poker, so poker, uh, I don't know what your, what your level of familiarness is with poker, but poker, the poker that I was playing was called Texas Hold'em. You get two cards. There's five cards on the table that everybody shares. And I liked the idea of being able to uh, play the other guys at the table and you're playing the cards and all these things. And so uh, the cash games is where you go and you sit down and instead of a tournament, in a tournament, one player is trying to accumulate all the chips at the table and they're, they're fake chips, uh, meaning that they, they have a pre-registered value but they're not actually worth that in money terms. Whereas it's a cash game, the chips that you have are associated with a real dollar. So if you have a dollar chip, it's worth a dollar bill. Whereas a tournament, you might have a thousand dollar chip, but it's not worth, it doesn't have any cash value. So you play it in these cash games and I found these to be very exciting because you could play them all day. There wasn't one person trying to accumulate all the chips and it was over at one point. No, you could play all night and all day. And this is where my addiction became real dangerous. I went to Las Vegas for the first time at 21 years old. Circus Circus. Anybody been to Las Vegas? Down at the very end of the strip. Down there by the Riviera and where all the it's it's like the it's the part no one goes to. Is the Circus Circus. It was the cheapest place to stay that week. We stayed out at the Circus Circus and they have this little tiny janky room in the back of this hotel, and I think there was like four poker tables there. Now you go into the World Series of poker in Las Vegas and you'll see like hundreds of tables. So to give you the sort of example of the difference. So there are like four little back rooms, smoky poker rooms, just like you saw in the movies back in the day or rounders. If you're familiar with that movie with Matt Damon back in the day, the smoked filled rooms of the casino. And that's where I fell in love with playing poker in cash games. I didn't care about the poker tournaments. I didn't care about online anymore. Because when I came back to St. Louis, my friends go, you know, we have casinos in St. Louis. And I was like, we do? And yeah, and so they sent me to the casinos, the boats here in St. Louis. And now you can find them in states across the country. Casinos, casinos, casinos. And I became so interested in playing cards that I also ended up working there. I quit my job, all the jobs that I had, the food service jobs and the radio jobs that I was working before. I became addicted and started working full time in the casino. So I was, I was gambling, and then I was working somewhere where I saw gambling, and then I was sleeping. Those were that was my life, and that's how I became so involved in my problem gambling addiction. And I'm telling you all of this to tell you the end result. All of these choices that I made, all of these decisions that I thought were in my best interest. Oh well, I want to make money by not doing a lot of work. That's what Chris Moneymaker did. Forty bucks is not a lot of money in the scheme of things. And he turned that into two million. And now he gets to be famous forever and live this great rich life. That's what I was chasing. On yesterday's show, we were talking about chasing your new life in Christ. For me, I was chasing this, this dollar bill. I was chasing this thought or this dream that I could be someone who didn't have to work for a living. That, isn't that like everybody's, I don't want to have to work. Like to me, cards wasn't working, but it, it ended up being a lot of work. 
a lot of work to get clean, a lot of work to stay sober, a lot of work to, uh, you know, maintain relationships, a lot of work to, you know, keep a house over my head and, oh, a lot of work. All the decisions that I made to try and make my life what I thought I wanted it to be didn't work out like I thought. You know, when I was a little kid, I didn't wake up and go, man, I was really hoping to be a, a problem gambling addict. I was really hoping for that. I was really hoping that I couldn't ever say no to a poker game. I was really hoping that even if the only money in my pocket I, I owed for rent, that I'd still be willing to put that on the table to have a good night out and not watch TV and not think about my problems. That's what it is. It's a cover-up. All addiction is a cover-up for the real problem in our hearts, and it's this. We were created to love God. Your spirit, your nature is created to worship God. He created you. Now, we're born with this silly sin nature that come into play because Adam, the first man who was created, sinned, and so did the first woman, and so there's sin now on the earth. And even though you weren't born as a sinner, you were born with sin attached to your life because Adam sinned. And so we have to find repentance of that sin because we, by our nature, that's why it's called sin nature. You think of your nature, you think of your instinct. There's no way for you to live a perfect life. Christ is the only person who lived a perfect life. And if you think, well, how did Christ live a perfect life? Well, you've heard the story of the virgin birth. There was not a, uh, a normal pregnancy. You know, there wasn't two sinful people getting together and creating a child. No, it was the Holy Spirit that gave birth to a perfect child that would be free of sin. I think about this sometimes, uh, the creation of blood types. Blood, obviously a big representation that, you know, Jesus paid the price for our sins on the cross via his blood, and blood is the sacrifice payment needed for our sins, and so it's this representation of importance in that it covers us, and yet there's blood types. This to me, this to me is is. One of those things you say, well, you can't make that up. If you're trying to talk to someone and hopefully have a a conversation that's not, uh, you know, riddled in arguments and frustration, but you talk to someone who says, well, I don't believe in God. I don't think he's there. I think we were created out of nothing and, and everything now is just perfect. Well, explain blood types to me. Why on earth would we need different types of blood if we weren't created? Because to me, if you think about this, all of us are born into sin except Christ. Christ was given a supernatural birth. And, you know, the the womb does not necessarily have the same blood type as the mother who carries it. You may not have the same blood type as your mother. Even though you're born from your mother, you may not have the same blood type. So it's completely possible for Christ to not have the same blood as his mother. We see this in, in science just in the way that we have different blood types. And for me... This is sort of an obvious effect of the creation. God created blood types to show us that we didn't need to be born out of sin, or what I should say is that Christ didn't have to be born into sin. Okay, So to me, so you're having this conversation with somebody, explain blood types to me. Why isn't there separate, seven different blood types in animals? Why is it just in humans? Why, you know, why is this a thing? The my life change through Christ, and I want to be able to encourage you to find hope. And that's the hope that I was looking for, this gambling addiction where I was doing everything that I wanted to do and I wasn't seeing the results that I thought I wanted to see. And so I realized when I needed to see things change in my life. So when we come back, I'm going to discuss what that change looked like and how I became a person who found Christ and it started chasing that new life and stopped chasing after the money. We'll talk about that when we come back. You're listening to the new John Simmons Show. Part of the Testimony House Network. Hey, everybody. New John Simmons here with you. Back in 2012, I found myself at the end of my.
by me the new john simmons is available on amazon barnes and noble website walmart you can also pick up a copy signed by me over at newjohnsimmons.com testimony house ministries is the proud sponsor of the new john simmons show we are so thankful for all of you who tune into the show watch us live on facebook or on our youtube channel without all of you the new john simmons show and all the other testimony house network shows would not be possible please visit newjohnsimmons.com today and click the partner with us tab to help us continue sharing our message of the future and a hope through christ with others god bless are you interested in learning more about finding God's sentence for your life? At newjohnsimmons.com, there are articles and videos describing how you can begin to write God's sentence for your life by finding passion, vision, and faith. In addition, newjohnsimmons.com has a variety of ways for you to be encouraged to continue writing God's sentence. As always, you can hear the show live weekdays at 9 p.m. Central Time by clicking the Listen Live button when you visit newjohnsimmons.com. Faithfully Fit and Wellness is St. Louis's all-new faith-based fitness program. Not only does Faithfully Fit want to see you shed pounds, but also wants to see you shed any other weight you've been carrying through Christ. Classes are filling up every morning during the week, so grab your spot in an individual class or an eight-week boot camp. Faithfully Fit offers classes in circuit training, drumstick fusion, cardio, and strength and personal training. Classes start at just 5 bucks, and the eight-week boot camp starts at 75 but wait, as a listener of the new John Simmons show, Faithfully Fit is offering you a buy one, get one free boot camp when you mention this ad when signing up. That's two camps for the price of one. You can bring a friend, split the cost, or have your second camp for free. Either way, this is a special offer only for show listeners. Sign up today by calling 314-239-4149 or visit faithfully.fit for more information. Faithfully Fit can also hold classes at your church or school. Don't delay contact faithfully fit where they hope to strengthen your body and your relationship with christ call 314-239-4149 wgnu the talk of st louis broadcasting on 9 20 a.m and 106.9 fm want to start writing or add to god's sentence for your life Want to learn what that means visit newjohnsimmons.com for articles and videos that can help you find a future and a hope for your life today now back to the new john simmons show welcome back to the show everybody New John Simmons Show, part of the Testimony House Network. I want to encourage you to find me on social media at New John Simmons on Instagram and Facebook. We also got the New John Simmons Show on YouTube and Facebook as well. That's where we do our live stream every night. If you're available to hop on live stream right now, if you're listening in your car or on NewJohnSimmons.com, we have video up, guys. Come join us on the stream, share your comments. We can share it live on the air. Very thankful for all of you who have joined us on the live stream tonight. I want to talk about my continued life in Christ. So in the first thing, we're sort of talking about how I got into this gambling addiction problem. And I share with you the story of how I became a problem gambler. And I was chasing after the same thing that Chris Moneymaker actually acquired. He won the World Series of Poker in 2002. He turned $40 into two and a half million bucks. I mean, that's something... I think if any of us could exchange forty dollars for two and a half million, I'm pretty sure we'd be amped up to make that exchange. And so I was no different. I was looking for this opportunity to make money without having to do hardly anything for it. I thought that gambling would be the quick fix. I got into a habit of gambling until I lost everything because I didn't have an off switch. It's not that I was bad. I didn't know how to stop. I would gamble all day, every day. I would neglect sleep there was a day i went to mississippi and tell you just you want to hear the bad stuff i'll share one of the bad stories so back in 2002 when i filed bankruptcy for the well i only filed it once but it wasn't the first time i had money issues i filed bankruptcy down in 2002 to cut off hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt that i had acquired from different loans and credit cards and and all sorts of things that i was doing wrong because of my addiction because it didn't take long for my addiction to to amp up and after you go through your savings and I was working so hard I had all these jobs I had all this money saved up in the bank and it didn't take long to burn through it because you start gambling and 
you know, you keep wanting to go. It costs money to keep gambling. It's not like, you know, I wish my addiction would have been running. Why couldn't I have been addicted to working out or something? Right? No, it's okay. It got me here because I'm I'm inside God's good graces, and I'm thankful that I'm saved and bought by the blood of Christ. But there is uh, a lesson to learn from anyone who's chasing after their own will and not the will of God. And that's what I want to talk to you about tonight because that's what I did. My entire adult life, I'm trying to do what I want to do. And what I want to do is make money without earning it, without you know using my discernible gifts or talents. I just want to be a famous poker player and, and get lucky one time. But I chased after that, and the money was gone. And after 2012 or 2002, I'm, I'm in the middle of telling this bad story. 2002, I filed bankruptcy. And I also, in that process of telling my family for the first time that I have a gambling addiction, seeing the tears shed down my mother's face, and my family was so angry at me for revealing this trouble that I was in. And so at the time, the state of Missouri where I live – had a list that you could sign where you could remove yourself from the premises of a casino. And if they found you, they could charge you with trespassing. It was meant to be a deterrent to people like me who were problem gamblers. And so I signed myself off of this list, but I still had this addiction. The addiction wasn't gone. The bankruptcy removed some of my money issues at that moment and telling my family revealed my troubles but my addiction didn't leave. And for many of us who are facing problems in our life today, if we try and solve them through methods that aren't changing our behavior, oftentimes those problems will show back up. If you switch your credit card debt from one credit card to another, you still have credit card debt. There are troubles in our lives that sometimes we just think, well, if we just move it over here, well, I'm having trouble at one job, but you don't want to go to the next job, or you go to the next job and you're thinking, why is it still stuck over here? Because you're still the same. Your behavior hasn't changed. You're not a better worker because you have a different boss. And I wasn't who God wanted me to be. And that's what I want to encourage you to do today. Find God's plan for your life. Because I was I was lost. I'd filed bankruptcy. I'd signed myself off this casino list. So I couldn't go to the casinos in Missouri. Instead... I started traveling to different casinos in other states on my days off. This is true <laughs> because I couldn't gamble in Missouri. And when I finally enough time had passed to where my family wasn't looking at me all the time to see if I was up to no good or where maybe I had a few extra dollars in the bank because I'd worked and couldn't gamble with it. You know, I started traveling and if I didn't have the money, I would borrow it or steal it or whatever I could do, find a, a credit card or somebody who would loan me money. Uh, I've had my addiction in a lot of different ways, and I would travel up to, you know, four or five states away to gamble, <laughs> driving in the middle of the night without sleep, talking about, you know, being sleep-deprived for my addiction. There was one trip where I stayed up for, I think, 100 hours because the casinos where I traveled to weren't closed. They were open 24 hours. And I didn't want to stop playing. I wanted to keep playing. That was it was feeding my addiction. And I remember falling asleep at a table and a guy having to be like, man, you're, you're asleep. You're asleep. And to me, like, I was just like, no, I'm awake. Let me get an order of Red Bull or whatever. To me, I didn't see the problem. <laughs> and I see it now. I mean, I can look at who I used to be and go, who are you? You, you are messed up, man. You're messed up. What you're doing is not right. But I didn't realize at the time. And you might be in a place where you think like every decision you're making is the right one. Because who has your best interest in mind except you? Who on earth is going to keep, you know, the things you want to do in mind? Well, God does. I didn't know that. I had to keep coming to the end of myself. You ever heard that expression, come to the end of your rope? Or you hit rock bottom. Yeah, I hit rock bottom. I, I thought I hit rock bottom in 2002 when I filed for bankruptcy. 
But I must have hit rock bottom again in 2004 when I put my car on hock. I must have hit rock bottom again in 2006 when my fiance left me. I must have hit rock bottom again in 2008 when my best friend doesn't want to talk to me. I must have hit rock bottom in 2010 when I had to go live in the panic room of my friend's basement for $100 a month because I couldn't afford to live anywhere else. I was almost homeless. <laughs> oh. The good old times. <laughs> And you're like, well, that John, that's you. You're an addict. You had a tough life. You had a tough upbringing. No, this is, this is what life looks like when you don't invite God into it. Trouble comes. Trouble comes anyway, but without God to guide you out of the trouble, you're just going to stay in it or get further down in it. It's not going to get much better without Christ because you don't have hope. Your, your problems might go away, but you lack hope because God is the God of hope, it says. If you want to find hope in your life, it really comes through Christ. People who don't know Jesus might say they have hope, but what is their hope in? Is there hope in their possessions? Well, I have a lot of money, John. I don't believe in Jesus, but I have a lot of money, so I am hopeful for tomorrow. Well, one day you're not going to be here. Is your hope in those possessions you can't bring with you? Or that money in the bank that could be deleted one day? Not that I'm some strange person who thinks that's going to happen but the point of the matter is is that where is your hope because me as a believer i can put my hope in christ who is eternal and i can think about the hope-filled life i'm going to have in heaven the hope of my possession or my possessions or my family or anything that's important to me is not the true hope that you find through christ it's not the real peace that you're looking for people might feel peaceful without Christ, but the peace of God, the Bible says, surpasses all understanding, meaning you can have peace even in the worst days of your life, even under your worst circumstances. And for me, in my worst circumstances, when I'm filing for bankruptcy, when I'm falling asleep after 100 hours awake at a poker table, when I can't even see straight and I'm driving you know, through the night, I had to bounce checks on my way driving from Tunica to St. Louis because I didn't have any money in the bank because I just spent my last $18 on a blackjack bet in, in Mississippi, and I'm in Arkansas, hoping that I can find the gas station that'll take a check before I run out of gas. Yeah, that sounds real fun, don't it? <laughs> I tell you the bad stuff because I want to encourage you. I don't want you to end up like I did. If you are like I am, I want you to know that there is hope for tomorrow because I didn't have any hope. I didn't have hope in my future. I didn't have hope in my possessions. I didn't have any possessions. I'd sold them all long ago. But one day, you know, you heard this expression, come to the end of your rope, come, you know, hit the rock bottom. Everybody's rock bottom is different, and you might not hit rock bottom once. You might hit it five, ten times. But whatever time you're on, whether it's the first time or the hundredth time you're on your bottom, I want you to know, if you cry out to God in that moment and you ask for forgiveness and say, Lord, you know, I've really been messing up. This is not the w way that I wanted things to turn out. And I realize now how bad it is because you'll come to that point in your life. We all come to a point in life where we sort of take a spiritual account of our lives and think, well, you know, what am I going to do with my future? Do, I, do I believe in God? And some of us take a, a hard nosed stance to say either I do or I don't. Some people go back and forth. Some people have other gods they worship. And there's all sorts of ways to practice religion here in this country. But when we talk about Christian Christianity, some people refer to it as a relationship. And Christianity is a relationship with Christ, your Lord and Savior, and with God. And we're not practicing a religion. This isn't just a book of rules. No other deity that we talk about in the world has a personal relationship in the fact that they love you and they love you so much that they're willing to die for you. Most of the other gods that you hear about are gods that want you to die for them. Not exactly <laughs> sign me up material, I don't think. But for so many people, the conversation in God isn't even in their lives. And that was where I was. I wasn't thinking about Jesus. I wasn't thinking about inviting him into my life. I wasn't thinking about he would provide the hope for my future. I was just seeing my circumstances. I was seeing all the bad decisions that I was making pile up in a corner, seeing the bad results of my life. I've shared many with them on the air tonight, many of these stories I've never told before. 
because I think it's important for you to understand something. Hope. You need hope. Without hope, you won't figure out a way to get out of the trouble that you're in. One of my favorite Bible verses, I, I quote it often here on the show, and I'm going to get the exact reference. Romans 15, 13. It says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you need hope tonight? I needed hope in a big way. I had lost half a million dollars. I had lost best friends. I had fractured relationships with many of my family members. I was seen as a loser by most of the people in my circle and my acquaintances. There weren't a lot of people that didn't know that John sort of messed up his life. I was depressed and suicidal. I had nothing to look forward to. I wasn't doing any of the things that I was hoping I would do with my life. And I didn't even realize I didn't have hope until the day that I finally cried out for it. I, I shared earlier in the show that I spent 90 days in rehab. And I told you that that entire time that I was clean in rehab, the desire to gamble never left me. It was always there, always there in the back of my mind. Go gamble, go gamble, go gamble. The off switch never got flipped. And there was a night where I asked my counselor, I said, you know, why isn't this desire to gamble going away? And he says to me, he goes, you're supposed to live with it. It's a day-by-day -day process. And he told me the serenity prayer. I was told to repeat the serenity prayer over and over again. This has happened. This was like a GA mainstay. The serenity prayer is not even in the Bible, by the way. Not that I'm against people who use it as a tool to stay sober. But that was his suggestion for me, who was really struggling with the fact that my desire to gamble was not leaving me. Oh, repeat the serenity prayer. You'll learn to live with this day at a time. If you have to deal with something very difficult every day of your life, how on earth can you expect to move forward? Let me, let me put it in a way maybe you can understand for those of you who aren't addicted. What if you went into work every day and your boss yelled at you? Would you want to stay in that job or would you want to get out of it? What if you had to go to your school because your kid got in a fight and beat somebody up and was expelled every day? Every day your kid got expelled. Every night you burnt the dinner. Every night something happened in your life you didn't want to happen. Every day. Every day your tire blew out on the way to work. Every day. Imagine imagine a situation in your life that you don't want to happen and imagine that you have to deal with it every day. And it takes a major effort for you to deal with it. I'm not talking about just like, you know, your favorite show is not on TV and you got to pick a different show. For me, the desire to gamble is so strong, it's no different than having to use all of my mental focus and energy to not do it. And I needed that desire to go away. And the response that I heard was so ridiculous that the minute I left that meeting, I went and placed the biggest bet I'd ever bet on football. And it started an eight-day bender that took me to a point of suicide. And I didn't want to kill myself the moment that I realized I wasn't going to stop gambling. It was at the end of my rope, after my money had ran out, after I'd realized when I'd finally – you know, taking a pause from my gambling and looked at what had happened and said, look, I, you know, just 90 days ago I was trying to get clean. And today I'm still back to the same problem I've had ever since I was 18 years old. What do I do? What do you do? Well, I sat on the edge of my bed and I cried out and I said, God, if you're real, I need you to show me a future and a hope for my life because I just don't have one anymore. And it was at that moment that my life changed forever because I heard the words, the kingdom of heaven is upon you begin to repeat in my head over and over again, like a CD that just got louder and louder. The truth is I thought I was going crazy. I thought I was hearing voices. I never heard this phrase. The kingdom of heaven is upon you. I was crying. I was considering moments before that running a car into a cliff 
taking all the pills in my house. I was having suicidal thoughts. And in a last-ditch effort, I cried out to God I wasn't even sure was real and the Christ I had never even talked to. And I heard back because just moments later, I felt compelled to open my Bible that I had never read that was given to me as a gift from my deceased father when I was 12 years old, opened up to the first chapter of the New Testament and just a few paragraphs in, you read in Matthew 3 and 2, repent for the kingdom of heaven is upon you. I didn't know what it meant to repent, but I figured it out. And I asked for forgiveness that night, and I found Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And that night, I began to read the Word of God for the first time as an adult. It began to open up my heart to the truth of who God is and what He has for me. When we come back, I'm going to share with you what He has for you and how you can find more hope in your life. He is the God of hope. He will overflow your life with joy and peace if you let Him. Don't go away. You're listening to The New John Simmons Show. Part of the Testimony House Network. I was going through a change that I didn't know how to explain, but I thought that y'all would be happy for me. I ain't mean to $500,000 allowed me to begin a new life in Christ where I found more joy, peace, and hope than I ever knew existed. I share the stories, including where I blame God for my father's death and the call into ministry that I found in my first book called Finding Faith. I also share with you the answers to the questions that I was asking God about what is faith and how can I move mountains with it. Finding Faith has those stories and so much more. I absolutely believe it can encourage you to find faith in your life today. Finding Faith by me, the new John Simmons, is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble website, Walmart. You can also pick up a copy signed by me over at newjohnsimmons.com. Testimony House Ministries is the proud sponsor of the new John Simmons Show. We are so thankful for all of you who tune into the show, watch us live on Facebook or on our YouTube channel. Without all of you, the new John Simmons Show and all the other Testimony House Network shows would not be possible. Please visit NewJohnSimmons.com today and click the Partner With Us tab to help us continue sharing our message of future and a hope through Christ with others. God bless. Are you interested in learning more about finding God's sentence for your life? At NewJohnSimmons.com, there are articles and videos describing how you can begin to write God's sentence for your life by finding passion, vision, and faith. In addition, NewJohnSimmons.com has a variety of ways for you to be encouraged to continue writing God's sentence. As always, you can hear the show live weekdays at 9 p.m. Central Time by clicking the Listen Live button when you visit NewJohnSimmons.com. Faithfully Fit and Wellness is St. Louis's all-new faith-based fitness program. Not only does Faithfully Fit want to see you shed pounds, but also wants to see you shed any other weight you've been carrying through Christ. Classes are filling up every morning during the week, so grab your spot in an individual class or an eight-week boot camp. Faithfully Fit offers classes in circuit training, drumstick fusion, cardio, and strength and personal training. Classes start at just 5 bucks, and the eight-week boot camp starts at 75 But wait, as a listener of the new John Simmons Show, Faithfully Fit is offering you a buy one, get one free boot camp when you mention this ad when signing up. That's two camps for the price of one. You can bring a friend, split the cost, or have your second camp for free. Either way, this is a special offer only for show listeners. Sign up today by calling 314-239-4149 or visit faithfully.fit for more information. Faithfully Fit can also hold classes at your church or school. Don't delay. Contact Faithfully Fit, where they hope to strengthen your body in your relationship with Christ. Call 314-239-4149. Every topic is on the table here at WGNU 920 AM and 106.9 FM. Find passion. Find vision. Find faith. You're listening to the new John Simmons Show, part of the Testimony House Network. Jesus Hey, everybody, welcome back to the new John Simmons show. Love Israel. Israel, how in the new breed. 
Jesus the same. I play that song in my car all the time. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Part of the Testimony House Network. I want to encourage you to go over to the newjohnsimmons.com site and you can download past episodes. You can watch some of our YouTube videos and some of our prearranged videos that we've created for you that tell you all about our show and all that we're trying to accomplish and give you some encouraging tips and conversations about how you can find God's sentence for your life. That is, of course, the purpose of this show, helping you find God's sentence for your life. Well, what does that mean, John? Well, it means that God has a plan for your life that's unique to you and that God is recording everything we're doing. So if we're able to find faith in Christ and do the things that God wants us to instead of doing the things that we want to do, I've just been sharing my long-winded testimony of becoming a problem gambler and then becoming a person who found Christ at the end of it. And now I'm going to share with you some of the things that changed in my life and how you can find hope in whatever situation you're facing. You may not be addicted. You may be a believer. You may not believe in God at all. But one thing that's true in all people is that we desire hope. We may not even realize we're missing it, but it is a natural human instinct to want to hope. Without hope, our heart gets sick, the Bible says. Without hope, you become depressed. Depression is, statistics say it's affecting over 50% of Americans' depression. This is a symptom of a lack of hope. And during my addiction, I didn't have hope. I didn't... I wasn't able to look in my future and see nice things ahead. I cried out to God. I asked him, God, if you're real, I need you to show me a future and a hope for my life today. It's how we end each show. And there's an intentionality behind that phrase because it's what I prayed. It's what I prayed to find hope in my life. And it's what I encourage you to pray to find hope in your life. I know that it works. It may not work for everybody the same sentence, but the same idea should work. Because look, Romans 15, 13, maybe my favorite Bible verse. I pray that God, who is the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. This verse, I mean, knocks it out in the park. In, in the things that we're looking for in life, you're talking about, well, I want hope. Well, God has hope. He overflows with it. And the, this verse tells us that we can pray and ask for it. You want to find hope? Ask God for it. That's what I did. I didn't even know that I was fulfilling Romans 15, 13. When I prayed that prayer and asked God to show me a future and a hope, I had no idea that those words were even in the Bible. It completely was devoid of my thought life. All I know is that my life was not what I wanted, and I wanted to see change. Is there an area in your life where you're contemplating change, weight loss, or a relationship, or a job, or school? Maybe you're about to change cars. Maybe you're looking for a, you know, a new apartment. Have you asked God to be a part of that process? Do you have hope in that process, or the hope in the change that you're about to make, and that it's going to create joy in your life? Because that's why we make changes, because we're hoping to see something take place that's positive. We lose weight because we think being skinny will make us happy. We dump the loser because we think the next person is going to make us happy. We switch schools because it was too hard there, and I want to be happy at this new school. I didn't like that job. I want to be happy at the new job. I want joy. Romans 15, 13, it knocks it out of the park because not only does it tell us that we can pray and ask God for hope, but it says he can fill us completely with joy and peace. And that's what we're doing. We're making changes in our life. And if we're willing to make changes in our life to find joy, but we're doing it because we want to do it. For me, I just shared my gambling testimony. I was chasing joy in my life through a deck of cards, chasing the joy of stacking the chips. That was where my hope was. But there's no hope in that. The game will not always be there. Maybe the players are gone. Maybe the game itself disappears. Maybe it becomes illegal to gamble altogether. Maybe your money's not there and you have no way to sit at the table anyway. God is eternal, though. God's never going anywhere. Christ has already came and died for you on the cross. So there's no way to think that he can't do what he's already done. 
And when you put your trust in him, again, knocks it out of the park, to use a baseball reference, for how you find hope. First you pray for it, then you get filled with joy and peace because you trust in God. Trust is another word for faith. Faith is being able to believe and have confident expectations in things that haven't happened, otherwise known as you believe something is going to happen in the future. Have you ever believed something is going to happen in the future? Sure you have. Have you ever taken a vacation? When you go on a vacation, you believe for something to happen in the future. Have you ever saved the date for a wedding and said, yeah, I'm going to be there that weekend? Have you ever enrolled at school? Anytime we look to the future with plans and expectations and we're looking forward to it, you know, like I'm looking forward to go to the movies. You know, we, we don't say I'm not looking forward to stuff. We do say this. I'm not looking forward to going to the dentist. I'm not looking forward for tax time. I'm not looking forward for this or that. But the things we're looking forward to, we want to see them ahead in our lives. We don't want to avoid them. We want them there all the time. That's what faith is. When you look forward in life, that's what trust is. When you look at Christ and you say, Christ, you're number one. I'm going to follow you wherever you take me. I'm going to go where you ask me to go because I am focused on you. My faith and my trust is in you because you died on the cross and your word says you created and designed me to do good works through Christ Jesus. I may have lived an entire decade without hope, but I have it now and you can have it too. I'm not special. I am not some special man God created to share the gospel. It's any better than anybody else. Nope. I am a dumb poker dealer who found Jesus. I'm not any better than anybody else. But what I have is a relationship with Christ where I have hope. So regardless of what my circumstances look like, regardless of my problems, and we have problems. My, we have a real struggle in my house right now with the job situation. There is a struggle in my home to know what to do next regarding my wife's job. And it's a very difficult conversation for us to have on a daily basis almost. You want to get real in my life? I got struggles too. And we don't know what to do sometimes. Just because I'm a believer and I can get on here every night and tell you, you know, how to find hope doesn't mean it's always so easy for me to find. We have hope that God will provide the answers. We have a vision that we're pointed at in our lives for her job. But it doesn't mean that the road or the problems that we're facing today are gone. We have to deal with them, and you have to find a way to have hope, even in the hard situations. Even when you can't see the forest through the trees, you have to remember that God has an overhead view, and time is not relevant to him. God can guide you out of your forest. God knows the way out. He knows how to show you the way out that avoids the cliff and avoids the forest fire and avoids the alligators in the swamp, he can guide you out in the best way possible where you end up and you say, well, this is not where I'm supposed to be. But all of a sudden, a helicopter shows up to save you. And, you know, God is God is so good to us. But he asks us to respond to our relationship with him in faith, meaning that we have to put hope in our hearts for the things that have not shown up and for believers that is walking out the plan that God designed you to walk. Ephesians 2.10, you were created and designed by God to do good works in Christ Jesus. So if you have found Christ, know that you have a significant and unique purpose that only you can fulfill. And if you decide to live your life doing the things that you want to do, that's fine. But when you get to heaven, God's going to ask you how you spent your time. And for those who don't know Christ, you may be like me and you're struggling year after year and things never get better. And no matter how hard you work or how hard you try or how good your idea is, things don't work out could it be because Christ is not in your life in fact I know so from experience I know that my life turned around 180 all of the problems that I had the desire to gamble that I was so desperate to get rid of didn't go away the night that I got born again but after a few months of getting closer to God continually praying and believing that God's my expectation for my desire to go away was going to be fulfilled and one day I woke up and I haven't gambled in six years the desire to gamble is gone completely removed from my life and whatever you're dealing with today, whatever problems you're dealing with, God can show you a way out and show you the door towards your future in Christ, towards the good things that you were designed to do. Wouldn't you like to have hope? Wouldn't you like to have peace and joy knowing that you are put your trust in God and stopped relying on yourself to figure it out? 
believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Christ is Lord, that he died for your sins, and he rose again. That's all it takes to be saved. I encourage you to cry out to God if you haven't already and say, God, if you're real, show me a future and a hope for my life today. What comes next will change your life, and I can't wait to hear those stories as we continue on with the new John Simmons show each and every night at 9. I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. I want to thank Mr. Curtis behind the boards, all of you who have been on Facebook Live, and all of you who have been listening live on your radio. We'll be here again tomorrow with Kevin Eskew talking about finding your God-given gifts. Don't go away. Until next time, guys, I pray you discover a future and a hope for your life today. Thanks for listening to the new John Simmons Show, part of the Testimony House Network. To replay this episode or listen to past episodes, look for the new John Simmons Show podcast on your mobile device. Stay connected to the show. Read the latest news, blog posts, and see behind-the-scenes photos by following at New John Simmons on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you would like to learn more about how you can begin to write God's sentence for your life, or join a growing community of people who are finding passion, vision, and faith for their lives, please visit NewJohnSimmons.com. Until next time, we pray you discover a future and a hope for your life today.